مرحبا واهلا وسهلا فيكم هوب يو ويل اند هاف يو وندرفول داي ان تو ديز توتوريال بي ليرنينج ابروكسيملي 22 بلس 2 فريزز فروم ماي تشايلد هود او ابروكسيملي ذا تشايلد اوف ماي جينيريشن اند بروبابلي ذا كارنت جينيريشن سو سم اوف ذيز فريزز اي ويل شير ويز يو فروم ماي تشايلد هود هوب فلي يو انجوي ذيم هوب فلي يو فاند ذيم هيلفول اند اي جيس ليت مي نو اف ذات از ستيل ابليكابل ليتس هاف ا لوك ذا فيرست فريز از اولويز يوز ان اربيك سو بيبل وود ساي شو اسمك يا حبوب Shu Ismaq, what's your name? Habub or Habab, sometimes people use, which means sweetheart or love, as you might guess, is conjugated from Habb, which means to love. So people in dialect would say, Shu Ismaq ya Habub, what's your name, sweetheart? And then they will go for the cheek and squeeze the cheek, which is quite painful. So this is one which is widely used. And for feminine, they would use or they would say, Shu Ismaq ya Hababe, Hababe. So Habab, which means sweetheart or lovely. Moving on, they would always say Min Hal Karbuj. Min Hal Karbuj. The word Karbuj refers to something which is mini or tiny, so something tiny, sweet or uh, lovely. So uh, it means who's the sweetie or sweetheart. So they would say Min Hal Karbuj. Min Hal Karbuj. And if it's feminine, all you need to do is just to add the feminine case to the end of M. So it would say Min Hal Karbuj. This phrase is quite common, so they will approach you, and it's likely uh, one of your aunties, and she would say, Halyan ya darsan, bidnan jawzak. Halyan, you look so handsome, ya darsan, you cheeky monkey. So darsan, it is the equivalent of cheeky monkey in English. Bidna, we would like in jawzak to marry you to somebody, so we need to find your bride. And no, this is only used for boys, so they will never say this or tell this to a girl, so it's only they would tell it to boys. So this was very common growing up. Uh, Any time I come across to one of my aunties, which I had quite a lot, so they would say "Halyan ya darsan, bidnan jawzak," and again they will go for the cheek and squeeze it. It was quite painful. This, as well, is very commonly used. A sort of a competition between the aunties and the uncles from your mother's side and from your father's side. So from your mother's side, your your uncle will come. You would say. You absolutely look like your uncle. And obviously, it's like a competition. And then everybody would come and do the same thing. So they will come. So your uncle, so your mother's brother will approach you, say, and again, he'll pinch you in the cheek or squeeze your cheeks. And then your auntie, your mum's sister, will come and say, Oh, Tala la khalto. Tala la khalto. You look absolutely like your auntie. And of course, if you see your uncles from your father's side, your uncle will approach you, your father's brother. You say, oh, So, am is your father's brother, is your uncle. You look like your uncle. And again, going for the cheek squeeze. And then your auntie comes, your father's sister. She would say, so, you look like your auntie, are you my sweetheart or my soul, or you are the soul of your auntie. So, it's these uh, phrases, I grew up with these phrases, and I felt most of the time was like a competition, like fighting over you, and most importantly, to go for the cheek squeeze, which it was nice. Our next phrase is, Latlab, don't play. Jouat, inside al order is the room. Uzakir, and memorize and study. Bihudu, quietly. It's quite often used, you know, back in the day. I remember, you know, when trying to play with my siblings and brothers and sisters and uh, study at the same time, it was quite loud. So, quite often would hear, Latlab, jouat al order, uzakir, bihudu. لا تلعب بالطابة بالجنانة هلا بتروح لعند الجيران. لا تلعب don't play بالطابة with the football بالجنانة in the garden. هلا بتروح now it will go لعند الجيران over to the neighbors. So this is quite common. Uh, it's always play in the garden and when kicking the ball, you know, as we know, with kids or children. Yeah, they used to go quite often to the neighbors and they used to get tired of throwing it back. Sometimes we used to get it back in one piece. Sometimes we used to get the football back in two pieces. And it wasn't really fun with uh, super glue to glue the football back together. It never worked. 
او نكست فريز لا تضرب الطابع على الحيط بدي اشتغل لا تضرب don't kick don't hit الطابع is the football على الحيط on the wall بدي اشتغل I want to work so this was as well you know when you haven't got the time or the chance to go to the uh, playground pitch or stadium depends where you are yeah we used to go just play in the street and just kick the football on the wall and I used to always choose the, the timing of the play and the places of the play nay, where my dad used to work so yeah I was quite proud of that uh, so I would always go and kick the ball on his side where my dad was working so he would just come out لا تضرب الطابة على بدي اشتغل so yeah here we go next لا تضرب الطابة رح تكسر البلور لا تضرب الطابة don't kick the ball رح تكسر you will break البلور which means the glass and it's more likely to be the window or the door yes so I used to do that quite a lot the next phrase I don't think is just me if you all uh, go deep down and look back at your childhood you all have done this guys I think so and it says لا تاكل ألم الرصاص لأنه مش ببلاش well maybe the first part of it maybe the, not the next part of it some of you no, let's not assume لا تاكل don't eat or bite ألم الرصاص الرصاص is lead by the way because the pencil is made out of lead ألم الرصاص your pencil لأنه because مش ببلاش because it wasn't for free it wasn't made or hasn't come and made its way into your pocket or bag for free so yeah I mean I bought it uh, yeah I don't think it was just me this is an example of this process but just to let you know this is not mine I kind of go more systematically and uh, find my way down to the bottom so no this is not me um, let me know how you used to approach your pencil I would be intrigued to know لا تاكل ألم الرصاص لأنه مش ببلاش The next phrase I don't think is me as well I think we all of us we've done at some point either by uh, trying to force your uh, fingernails down into the rubber, the razor or just bite it yeah, whichever let me know which uh, approach you went for it and it was لا تعض محايتك بابا لا تعد, don't bite محايتك, your rubber or racer, baba, daddy so don't bite it they used to smell really nice I can't remember what they used to call they do used to smell like really nice and you couldn't resist you must bite it I think it was that psychology they used to put uh, uh, or scent it absolutely beautifully so the kids wouldn't resist and they bite it and then it's gone then they buy another one here we go that's capitalism for you our next phrase when kharjitak so when kharjitak kharjiye is pocket money and most of the times you know you kind of just go and blow it up on the first hour of going to school by the end of the week or the month uh, they would say when kharjitak what happened to your pocket money yes it was gone on the first day in the first five minutes when kharjitak and obviously if it's feminine when kharjitak the next phrase is ta'lahon come over here or come here this is always a warning so uh, 95% we wouldn't go because you know you start to calculate what have I done what have I done and I think at the end of it it wasn't great so this one when always we were asked come to here we definitely knew that we've done something naughty that was a warning phrase our next phrase go over there روح لهونيك and similarly to the previous one this was a warning phrase meaning we've done something naughty and we started to calculate what have I done what have I done well at the end of it you will know but yeah روح لهونيك equally we would get told خليك هون ولا تتحرك خليك هون ولا تتحرك as kids it was very difficult to stay in one place and not move especially when going down to the market our next phrase is always told to you by your elder sibling. لازم تسمعني لأنه أنا أكبر منك. So لازم تسمعني, you must listen to me. لازم تسمعني, you must listen to me. لازم تسمعني لأنه, because أنا, I am, أكبر, bigger, older منك than you. Because I'm older than you. 
By the way, guys, as we're here, and if you're finding this uh, entertaining or helpful or informative in any form or shape, then definitely don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button as it helps the channel in this video quite a bit. Many thanks. لازم تدرس هلا وبعدين روح العاب. لازم تدرس هلا وبعدين روح العاب. لازم تدرس هلا. You should study now. You must study now. بعدين and after that, روح go. روح go. ولعب and play. Uh, I like to highlight that always uh, this verb sometimes used by yourself like just go away. روح روح. So it could be used as an imperative. So yeah, this would be the last resort when. The kids don't really listen. Ruh, which means go away. I know our next phrase was be always used when you come back from school. When I come back from school, so my mom would say, Ruh hat tiaba, go and put your clothes. Adam in front of el ghassale, the washing machine. Ruh hat tiaba, adam el ghassale. Ruh, go, hat, put or place. Tiaba, your clothes. Adam in front of. الغسالة, the washing machine. وصباطك, and your shoes. ورا, behind الباب, the door, where nobody were able to see it. Uh, see the state they are in after a very hard working day at school. So yeah, as a child you get to do lots of stuff. روح حط تيابك الدم الغسالة وصباطك ورا الباب. We used to always go to school, you know, looking very smart. And at the end of the day, we're coming back, we're always missing... Um, a pair of shoe or a bag or a book or a pencil. Yeah, we used to get to do a lot of stuff. Um, one of them, not bring one of your items or clothes. Wayne Ktabak. Wayne Ktabak. Where is your book? I used to forget my book at school a lot. Wayne Ktabak. Jibo bukram nil madrasa. Bring it tomorrow from school. Jibo, bring it. Jibo bukra tomorrow. Minil madrasa from school. Next. Dear Balak Atiabak Ulat was Sekhetiabak. Dear Balak, look after. Atiabak your clothes. Dear Balak Atiabak, look after your clothes. Ulat was and do not make them dirty. Tiabak is your clothes. So this phrase would be always used once uh, my mom would drop me at school and just by the gate, she would say, wave, looking concerned. Dear Balak Atiabak Ulat was Sekhetiabak. You know, look after your clothes and don't make them dirty. Which I couldn't guarantee that. No way. Latin sa tati hel kis lal anse. Latin sa do not forget. Tati to give hel kis this bag, and it's more likely to be a plastic bag back in the day. Lal anse to the teacher. Could be probably a present or trying to bribe her. Latin sa tati hel kis lal anse. Don't forget to give this bag to the teacher. Um, so it's more likely to be something to win the teacher over. Yep, back in the day they used to do that. Uh, it was okay, it was fine. Not like these days. Don't forget to give this to your teacher. I remember this phrase always used by my dad uh, because back in the day they didn't have phones, so we were technically the phones. We were the messengers or the telegrams. So we would say, so he would ask us to روح قول لعمك روح قول لعمك يجي لعندنا لأنه بدي إياه بموضوع روح قول go and tell لعمك to your uncle يجي لعندنا to come to see us لأنه because بدي إياه I want him إياه is him بموضوع with something with this I'll end today's session hope you find them useful and helpful don't forget to share some of your most used or most commonly used phrases when you were a child, uh, depending on the level of naughtiness you were as a child. So yeah, it would be interesting to share some of your childhood uh, phrases. I'll be very intrigued uh, and compare them to mine. Great guys, I'll leave you in peace and I look forward to seeing you in our next tutorial. Ma salame.